Welcome to Filled with His Love. I'm, I'm very excited about this particular episode, um, perhaps as much as any that I've ever done, because I'm going to tell you about a family that is truly inspiring. I've titled the episode, Don't Give Up on What You've Been Given. In other words, charity beareth all things. I've always wondered exactly what is meant by charity or love beareth all things, but I think this is the best way to say it. Don't give up on what you've been given in life. So I want to tell you about Zach Fridley. I met him in January of 2004 as he entered the mission field. I still remember when he entered, the very day he entered, because we normally, my wife and I, who were mission leaders in that mission, we normally had a dinner, and then after the dinner, we had a testimony meeting with the new district that had just arrived in the mission field. And so that evening, right after the uh, meeting began, the testimony meeting, Elder Fridley, Zach leaned over and said, um, I need to leave for a few minutes. And I said, oh, all right, that's fine. So he left and I wasn't sure, sure where he'd gone. And um, so the meeting went on and he didn't return. And so I thought, well, I better go find out what happened to this new missionary. And when I found him, he, I said, is something wrong? Um, and he said, well, President, um, I really, I just need to call my mom. So this is something about attachment relationships. And you have to remember back then, uh, missionaries did not all call their parents when they arrived in the mission field. They, they waited till Mother's Day or whatever. And so this was a special request. I said, well, of course, Elder Fridley, you can call your mother. That is fine. So I sat down with him. He called his mom and basically just told her that he was doing fine and everything was good. And he wanted her to know that he had arrived safely and all was good. So he went back to the meeting and then he bore a great testimony. And that's how he got started off on his mission. So he finished his mission in 2006. And then in 2007, Zach and Tessie got married and we went to their reception. I remember it very well. They kind of look like a couple out of a magazine. Um, they're just kind of full of life and full of joy, really. And so when he was a missionary, sometimes a stake president would call me and say, we hope you don't transfer him out of the stake because people will go into mourning if he leaves the stake. Everybody loved Zach Fridley. So they got married in 2007, and as a child, he liked to hunt and fish and play all kinds of sports and do all kinds of things. And then in 2008, Dakota Fridley was born. I might add, you know, before this, um, when he left the mission field, the night he left, he told me, that he had lost his sight in one of his eyes. And I didn't know that. He certainly covered well. Um, he had no sight in one of his eyes. It happened when he did a deep dive into a pond. When he came up, his vision was blurry. He went to the doctor and they said, your optic nerve is uh, damaged. And they didn't know exactly the cause, but uh, he lost that sight in that eye. And so he said, I didn't want anybody to know about it. Uh, and so I didn't want any sympathy. He said, but that's why I couldn't play racquetball sometimes with you on preparation day when my companion was playing with you because I can't play racquetball because I can't see out of this one eye. Very interesting for me. And all he was hoping for at the end of his mission was a miracle that he might have that sight restored in that eye. But he got home and after marriage in 2008, they had Dakota Fridley, the little firstborn child. But then trouble happened. He was on his way to work. He became a landscaper um, for business. And so on his way to work, um, he was noticing that his vision in his other eye was becoming blurry. So he went to the doctor, stayed in the hospital for three weeks, and lost the sight in his other eye. I remember visiting him in the hospital in 2009 Again, he was hoping for a miracle that he might not go blind. That miracle did not happen. And so then he had to figure out how to support his family 
without any sight. And he decided to start this landscaping business. He became very successful, actually. He would go up to people he used to tell me, <laughs> say, you probably always wanted a landscaper who was blind, right? Well, here I am. And so uh, he would endear himself to his customers. So had a very successful business with landscaping and also an inventor. So uh, he invented a new post hole digger, got a patent on it and played with other product development ideas. If you haven't seen my uh, video on my YouTube channel about freeing the moral imagination, it's called Freeing the Moral Imagination. You should take a look at that because Zach Fridley is quite an example of a creative person who frees his imagination to think of things. His wife once said his mind never stops. He just keeps thinking of things all the time, new products. Now, in 2014, they had another little child named Navy May. And then more trouble happened after this. One day, Dakota was outside uh, and by a fence, and the fence panel just toppled over on him, kind of crushed him, kept his brain without oxygen for an extended period of time, caused severe brain damage. So one day he was just a happy-go-lucky little kid, and the next day he could not walk, talk, feed himself or anything, so became very dependent. So then there were the four of them, Navy May, Tessie, Dakota, and Zach. And then they had another child named Trip. And so they, they just, this whole family just inspires me, even when I'm now doing this podcast, just thinking about them. Um, Tessie is an Instagrammer. So if, if you want to find her posts on Instagram, the address is Tessie, T-E-S-S-I-E-F-R-I-E-D-L-I, -S -S -E -E Tessie Fridley on Instagram. Here's her latest post. She said, living a life I never wanted with joy I never knew existed. I want to just kind of repeat that. I want to repeat that. Living a life I never wanted with joy I never knew existed. In other words, they're full of joy even though they've got, she says, blind husband Zach, brain injured son Dakota, and child's Navy and trip. Enjoy the ride. So the more I've thought about them, the more I see them as an example of everything that I've tried to communicate in, in the book Filled with His Love. If you look at part three in the book where all my previous episodes on this podcast, I talk about Be Still. Well, she talks about how sometimes they just need stillness in their life. They need closeness to God, closeness to each other, kind of reflect on how they can make it uh, with a child with severe disabilities and also a husband who does not have sight. She also talks about how they embrace the unexpected. She's come to expect the unexpected. I talk about in the book, Embrace the Unexpected. I can't think of anybody who has been a better example of embracing the unexpected. She did not expect her husband to go blind. She did not expect her child to become disabled. Stay spiritually close. That's what Zach and Tessie have done very impressively through all of this. They've stayed spiritually close to each other and to the Lord. And they talk about their faith a lot. Make your emotions. They have decided not to let emotions make them, but to make their own emotions and regulate their own emotions. And of course, she talks about how sometimes it's very difficult and things get challenging and discouraging at moments, but they still hold on to each other and to God. Let love change you. I, I can't even, again, think of anybody who <laughs> comes to mind that I can say that they have let love change you more than Zach and Tessie Fridley. And love is always the motive behind all that they do with their children, with their friends. Even with this blog that she does on Instagram, uh, it's a way for her to deal with the challenges she's found in life. But so many people have found hope and confidence and faith by 
reading her blog and posts. Uh, just an inspiring family. So I hope that as you contemplate this particular family, you will be buoyed up in your own life and kind of have a little more hope, a little more faith that you'll be able to bear all things, whatever you've been given in your life. So this message again is don't give up on what you've been given. We're all given things and sometimes we ask ourselves, I wonder why this particular thing happened to me or I wonder why my parents were like this or why my friends did this or wh whatever it might be. We sometimes wonder why certain tough things come into our lives. And at that moment, I think of Tessie and Zach and their family because I've never had to face anything remotely as difficult as they've had to face. So I hope this gives you a little hope. I hope that if you know somebody that needs a little boost, uh, you'll introduce them to Tessie and Zach and their story uh, by sharing this episode or by helping them see it on uh, YouTube. It'll be posted on YouTube as well with pictures of their family if you'd like to see that. So I hope that it brings you hope and I hope that it brings others around you a little hope uh, that you might be able to bear all things that you've been given. So thanks for listening and we will see you next time.